Hello, thanks for tuning in to the Honors College Information Session. My name is Elizabeth Roberts, I'm the Associate Director of Admissions for the Honors College and an alum of the Honors College as well. So honors colleges in general are smaller academic communities. They provide additional opportunities to students who are um, academically motivated and want to make the most of their time in college. The College of Charleston, we are focused on three program goals, mind, self, and society. So we want students to develop strong critical thinking skills, that's the mind. We want students to be self-aware and self-reflective, that's the self, obviously. And we also want students to think about all the ways that they can contribute to their communities and societies. We've been around for over 50 years and have a strong network of alums who often mentor our current students and offer internship and job opportunities as well. We have about 700 to 750 students in the Honors College, so we're less than 10% of the entire student body on campus. We have lots of unique courses and countless opportunities for you to grow and succeed while you're a student here. We'll talk first about academics. That's traditionally what people think about when you think about an honors college. It's really one small piece for us, but an important one nevertheless. As an honors student, you would take about 25% of your coursework within the honors curriculum. That means the majority of your courses are still happening within the regular College of Charleston curriculum. But honors courses are different. Um, they're taught by some of our best professors. Professors have to apply to actually teach honors courses. They are only other honors students. And in a lot of ways, they feel more like a graduate level seminar. They're smaller and more discussion based with about an average of 17 students. They are gonna be writing and reading intensive and they're highly interdisciplinary. So they're great for students with lots of different interests who aren't solely focused on one specific field. We have designed the honors curriculum to meet multiple requirements, so it's nothing extra to do honors, just a different way of fulfilling requirements. So many of your general education and potentially even some major and minor course requirements can be fulfilled through the honors college. Overall, there's gonna be lots of choices to choose from as well. So we have over 50 courses taught each semester that are going to be meeting different requirements. So based on what you need, you can pick the right honors course for you. This is an overview of the curriculum. This is all on our website as well, but just to give you a sense of what sort of courses you would be taking as an honor student. They're designed to develop and progress throughout your time here at the College of Charleston. So most of our students do come in as freshmen. In that first year, you'll take Honors 100 and Honors 110 together. So this is a great way to be introduced not only to the requirements and expectations of the Honors College, but also to your peers. Beyond George Street, that Honors 100 course is truly an introduction to all things you need to know about the College of Charleston. It's our first year seminar class. You'll also have a peer facilitator who's an upperclassman helping you um, navigate your first year. And then Honors 110 academic writing is a great way to build a solid foundation for the writing courses that you'll take um, both as an honor student and as a regular College of Charleston student. And then beyond that, there are different categories of courses that you'll need to take, but you'll have options based again on your needs and what you would like to take. So honors foundation courses, those are very um, 101 style courses that are designed to meet mostly general education requirements. Quantitative literacy courses, those are going to be math courses, but not just pure sort of traditional uh, math like calculus, but also um, a conceptual math course that's great for students who are not in a STEM major. There are different exploring complexity and diversity colloquia courses. These are truly seminar style courses that are the most interdisciplinary and unique courses that we offer. And I'll talk more about those in a second. And then an advanced studies course. So this is similar to that honors foundation course, but a higher level, more advanced. All of those are really developing a strong core for you to move into Honors Directed. Honors Directed is designed to be self-guided learning. So you actually propose what it is that you wanna do for each of these requirements. So for Honors Immerse, usually that happens in junior year and students can do something experiential. So a study abroad program, it could be an internship or an independent study. You'll work with your Honors Advisor to figure out what is a good fit for you and your goals um, and you'll pursue that experience to fulfill the honors immersed requirement. And then by senior year, all of our students are expected to do an independent research project. That's the bachelor's essay. You have lots of support and guidance. We don't necessarily have you do it all by yourself, but we do want you to have that experience of going through from start to finish with an independent research project. It can be based on something in your major or it could be interdisciplinary. And you, by the end of it, you will have a paper that you can either present at conferences or potentially publish. 
So these are some of those more unique classes that I was talking about. Most of these fit within that colloquia series category. And you can see there's lots of different options. This is actually just a handful. There's lots more being offered and they change pretty regularly based on students' interest and what professors are interested in teaching. But hopefully there is something for everyone in this series option. I wanna just explain one of them so you have sort of a sense of what kind of courses they are like. So Engaging the Dance Thinker um, is one there in the middle of the page, and you can see that picture on the right-hand side. This is a literature course taught by Dr. Meg Scott Copsis, and it involves choreography and dance as well as literature. And if you're thinking, I don't know how those two things go together, well, that's a great reason to take class and find out. It's very much about blending different ways of knowing and learning. So think about kinesthetic ways of learning with dance and choreography and movement um, as a different way to engage with text than you're maybe used to in a standard literature course. Maybe that doesn't necessarily interest you. There's lots of other options. Many of them have unique components. Genetics and the Good Society, for example, has a study abroad program um, built into the course itself where you would go to Scotland over spring break and tour a genetics facility. Um, lots of other courses like that have a similar experiential learning component. We think that's pretty important for you to get outside the classroom and learn. Experiential learning is also really important. I've been talking a lot about that already, but I wanna highlight even more all the ways that the Honors College really sets students up for lots of opportunities to get involved in learning outside of the classroom. We really want our students moving beyond George Street and doing things that are going to be really meaningful to them, both in their careers and in their personal development. So high impact learning opportunities like volunteering, research, internships, and study abroad are all built into our curriculum. I'll talk more about that in a second, but you can also check out some of the opportunities to get involved early on by going to the Honors Hub webpage. This is where we post lots of opportunities that our students have. You can see in real time what sort of things students are pursuing. All of our first year students will do some sort of service project that's built into that Beyond George Street course that you will do in your first semester. But this is a year long project. So we want you to engage in some sustained involvement here in the Charleston community. There are two different tracks here. You can either do direct service, that's traditional volunteering, where you're partnered up with a nonprofit in the area and volunteer with them about once a week for your entire semester. Or you can do the deliberative democracy track, which is more issue based. So students focus on an issue that's really relevant here in the Charleston area, things like transportation, affordable housing, food insecurity, and do some education surrounding that. Um, so they may go to city council meetings or talk with experts in the field, and really they're educating themselves on the problem and then working together as a team to propose some sort of possible solution to that problem. This is a great way for our students to get a sense of how to be an engaged academic. So really exercising what it means to be a scholar citizen. And we also think it's really important for students to learn about the Charleston community, to be involved and to give back to a community that really does give a lot to our students. There are also lots of opportunities to do research, internships, study abroad, either through that honors immersed or bachelor's essay component. You can see all of our honors students will complete a research project before they graduate. That's because all of our students will do that bachelor's essay. Many students are also doing internships and study abroad. As an honors student, it's not that you're limited in doing any of these things. In fact, you're more likely to do them as an honors student and to do them early on. So many of these things our students are engaging with as early as their freshman year. I love to tell the story of a really ambitious freshman who came in, um, who before he was even on campus for his fall of his freshman year, um, he was actually getting involved in doing research with a professor on campus and presenting his research as well at a poster session that we hold on the first day of classes. So you don't have to wait until you're an upperclassman as you might at other schools. We're very much focused on undergraduate work here at the college and so it's a great opportunity for you to get some hands-on learning experience really early on. We'll talk a little bit now about mentoring. So with all those experiential opportunities, you have lots of support and guidance from professors and staff to help you sort of figure out what it is that you wanna do. We do have lots of professors in different disciplines teaching honors courses, but we also have some core faculty and staff members, you can see some of their pictures here, who work solely with our honors college students. 
We want to make sure that you have a really strong student experience. And so that's what a lot of our staff are working on. But our faculty serve as advisors and mentors to our students. So as an entering freshman, you would be paired up with a faculty member who would be your advisor throughout all four years. And they're going to meet with you at least once a semester and talk through not only your coursework, but also what sort of opportunities you might want to take advantage of, whether it's getting involved in a research project in Panama for the summer after your freshman year, or finding some sort of internship in your home um, during the summer. They're gonna be there to help you accomplish whatever your goals are, but also to help you sort of expand your goals and push your horizons um, broader than maybe what you think um, they should be. And so um, this is a great asset and a great advocate for you as well. They really foster a strong sense of community and we also have um, very much student-focused community as well. Many of our students are coming from pretty competitive backgrounds in high school, but the Honors College is less about being competitive and cutthroat and more about making sure that you have a supportive group of peers who are helping you and collaborating with you to be successful. Our Honors students are all on different paths. That's something that I think our students recognize really well, and you're not competing with one another on those paths. You really are sort of there to make sure that each of you are able to do what it is that you've set your mind on. Like many colleges and universities, we do have specific honors housing on campus. It's located in Barry Residence Hall, which is pictured here. It's a suite style setup, so you would share a bedroom with one other person and then a common area and a bathroom with usually four to six students in each suite. On each floor, there's a full kitchen, a study area, a laundry room, lots of common spaces. And then on the first floor, there's faculty offices. So your honors advisor may be right downstairs, as well as two classrooms where you'll take many of your honors courses. So it really is a living learning community. Um, and that's something we've worked really hard to cultivate. We don't require that students live there, however, but we strongly recommend it for that first year. And I would say about 85 to 90% of our first year students do live in Barry. You can continue living in Barry beyond that first year, um, but it is really set up to be a freshman dorm. There are also lots of leadership opportunities built into being part of the Honors College. When we're looking at applicants, we want to see that students already have leadership experience and we want to continue to foster that in your own development while you're here on campus. So as an upperclassman, our students serve as peer facilitators with that first year experience course. They serve as project liaison for the different Honors Engage projects, and they're really helping those first year students navigate through the college transition. We also have a couple of clubs dedicated to the Honors College. So Honors Student Association and the Scholar Citizen Initiative, they do a lot of event planning and make sure that there are fun events happening as well as ones related to different social issues. Um, and so this is a great way for students to really take on some leadership roles and again, give back to the honors community as well as to the campus and Charleston communities. We also have honors student ambassadors who are there to guide the next generation of honor students through the college decision process. So they are students who want to help prospective students and families sort of navigate what it is that you're looking for in a college. And if you're ever interested in talking with one of those students, feel free to reach out and I'm happy to connect you with them. As a student in the Honors College, what will life be like for you? It's one of the questions I get most often. As an honor student, you're not gonna be isolated from the rest of campus. You're still very much a part of the College of Charleston student experience. You can participate in any club organization or activity that our other students are participating in. You can choose any major, you can be on a sports team, whatever it is that you wanna do as a College of Charleston student, you can do and be in the Honors College. As an honor student, we just want to provide you with some additional support and programming that really does help you um, challenge yourself, but also be successful in the process. So whatever you envision your student life being like, you can do that while also being part of the Honors College. As an honor student, there are lots of ways to go above and beyond and set yourself apart. You can be considered for the Aiken Fellows Society as long as you complete your honors application by December 1st. We review all applicants submitted by that day for invitation to an interview weekend where students compete for membership in Aiken Fellows. That includes some scholarship opportunities as well as professional development opportunities and is great for students who have really gone above and beyond in high school and who we expect will continue to do that while they're in college. We also work closely with the Office of Nationally Competitive Awards to support students in applying for some of those different awards, things like the Boren Scholarship to do um, a funded study abroad program, to the Rhodes Scholarship where you might uh, go to the UK for a graduate program, 
or anything in between. There's an award for you. We are a top producer of Fulbright students and we have been for six years now. And a lot of that has to do with that personalized mentoring and hands-on education that you're getting in the Honors College. We've also partnered with the Classics Department on the AB degree, the RDM Baccalaureus degree. They've offered this since CFC first opened. In fact, this was the first degree offered at the College of Charleston. Um, but now we're working with a partner, working with the Classics Department to make sure that you can meet some honors requirements while also meeting the AB degree requirements. Um, so things like classical civilizations or um, a Greek language course. At the end of the day though, where will the Honors College take you? I want to talk a little bit about what our alums are doing. Um, you can see just a few sample of different alum um, successes and outcomes here, but what I want to emphasize more than anything is that as an alum of the Honors College, we will be proud of you with whatever you're taking on and doing. It's not a one-size-fits-all experience. We aren't just funneling students directly into PhD programs, although we know that that is a good option for many of our students. But after graduation, about half are going into graduate school, about half are entering the workforce or doing some sort of service term like Peace Corps or AmeriCorps. But whatever it is that you wanna do, we've tried to customize the opportunities and experiences that you'll have during the Honors College to meet your needs and help you accomplish your goals. And that's something that I really enjoyed as a student when I was in the Honors College. So finally, let's talk about how you get here. There is a separate application that you'll need to complete to be considered for the Honors College. On either the regular College of Charleston application or the Common App, there will be a question that asks if you're interested in the Honors College. If you select yes, you aren't automatically considered. But what that will do is that once you hit submit on your application to the college, you'll get access to the supplemental application. There's a separate essay, resume, and teacher recommendation that we require um, with a prompt specific to the Honors College that's available every summer before the application opens. But with those three components, as well as your transcript and test scores, we're looking for students who have really done a lot in high school, who are academically prepared for the Honors College, and who wanna make the most of their time in college as well. So you can see a quick profile of what our applicants look like. They have strong writing skills, mostly A's in the most rigorous courses available at your school. It's all contextual for us. And they have sustained leadership and community engagement experience. You can see our average test scores on here, so about a 1310 to 1430 for SAT and a 29 to 32 for ACT. The Honors College itself is about half in-state, half out-of-state, so that's not necessarily something we're considering when we are reviewing applications. Um, it is a holistic application review, so I talked about the context of what sort of courses are available. We are trying to look at all the pieces together, and the test score really is just one component. Here are some important dates and deadlines. These are all also on our website and we'll be posting pretty regularly about these as well on our social media pages. But December 1st is the big one to remember. That's our honors priority deadline. That ensures that you're considered for invitation to that honors college interview weekend where we select our Aiken Fellows and scholarship recipients. And that means that you get your honors decision quite early in the process. So you have that when it comes to making your decision. Um, those honors decisions are released by January 31st. We do have to wait until after you get your regular College of Charleston decision and are accepted to the College of Charleston before we will release your honors decision. We do that so that your honors decision doesn't in any way affect your regular college decision. You can apply later than that December 1st date if you need a little bit more time. So February 15th is our final honors deadline and we will release those honors decisions by April 1st. And then May 1st is the important date when you tell us what your decision is. So that's when you need to place your deposit, for the College of Charleston to claim your spot in the class of CFC Honors. There is no separate deposit for the Honors College, um, but if you've been admitted to Honors and you place your enrollment deposit, we assume, unless you tell us otherwise, that you're enrolling in the Honors College specifically. And that is all I have for you. Thanks so much for tuning in. I encourage you to connect with us on social media sites at CFC Honors. We keep those pages pretty active. A lot of that is actually managed by a current student. So you can see honors through the eyes of a current student. I would encourage you as well to check out our different blog pages, especially the honors hub. So you can see again in real time what sort of opportunities are available to our students. And if you have any questions or want to talk more about the Honors College, feel free to contact us. Um, I would encourage you to email honors at cofc.edu for more information. Thanks again and have a great one.